Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Eric Amble. He's going to tell a great story about recording Neil Young in his barn. I was producing an album for Neil Slofgren. It became the album Crooked Line. We were working on this particular song. We got to the solo section, and I was telling Nils, you know, what I think we need here is sort of a non-solo solo, like a... Neil Young harmonica solo. And Nils was like, I'll call him. And, and uh, you know, Neil Young is my favorite artist, and I love the way he plays the guitar, and I lo- like how he sings, and I, I like that he's one of the few guys that pronounces a hard R like the Midwest uh, people. And uh, so we went out there eventually, uh, to do some overdubs at Neil's ranch. And, you know, I saw the barn and his guitar tech, Larry Craig, he took me around and, uh, you know, because he could tell how much of a Neil fan I was. He went and showed me the, uh, the he's got several barns, so the equipment barn where they recorded Freedom. And I saw, like, his amp stash. And he had, like, he had 10 at one time, I had three blonde basements. Neil had ten blonde basements with the matching cabinets. You know, in addition, you know, imagine if you, you know, you loved equipment and you never had to sell any to get more equipment. So uh, it was really kind of phenomenal when we were at the studio and kind of waiting for Neil to show up, the engineer. And those guys were like trying to, you know, waging bets to see what car he would show up in, you know, because he has this whole, he has a barn. It's actually a steel building that houses all his cars. And uh, when he showed up, they're like, oh, he's got the stretch. And the stretch was a uh, four door Dodge Power Wagon from. 1975, which is like the toughest truck. It really is the toughest truck, probably. You know, I talked to him about it later on a little break because, uh, you know, I was like, man, I love that truck. You know, my band director at the University of Wyoming, he had one of those trucks. And he was like, I got it brand new in 1975. You know, and it had like one quarter panel was primered and everything. Oh, and so they were like, when he pulled up in the stretch, he comes in and says to one of the guys, get Hank. And I'm like, Hank? And one of the guys goes out, and in the back of his truck, there's a guitar case, and it's it's not a Martin D45. It's Hank Williams' Martin D45. Larry Craig you know, had Hank there. He was like, would you like to play Hank? And I was like, I was like, I don't know. You know, it's like, well, okay. You know, like you got to at least, you know, play a G chord on it. And it was, it was a tremendous instrument. It was just, the whole thing was so emotional. It was really hard to keep track of what was going on, especially with this kind of stimulus. I mean, he, he had a beautiful Neve console. He had NS10s up on his console, but he had someone else make uh, pine cabinets for them that were wood grain, so he wouldn't look at the black Yamaha thing. It was custom. And you're up there in the California Redwoods, and it's hard to explain this, but you know, usually when you look at the console and the speakers, the live room is out in front of you, right? Not at this place. There were French doors that opened to the California Redwoods, both in front of you and behind you. And then they just had a TV that showed you the recording area. You know how you go to a studio and they have some extra outboard gear and some is in the rack and some is in little rack cases that are stacked around. And all of those Rack cases were made of hand-rubbed teak wood, like the boat. 
You know, it was just, it was overwhelming. Even when he was going from the house to the studio, he didn't do it without Hank. That was just part of his thing. And, uh, I mean, for me, it was just the whole, the whole day and a half was like a fantasy thing. We wanted Neil to play some guitar on one of these songs, and, you know, he got old black out, you know, and played it through the rig with the whizzer and everything. He showed me that. They were like, do you want to play it? And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, it was like, I really dug it, too. It was set up like my guitars. I run sort of what I refer to as a resistance setup. They're, they're not really easy to play because I don't want it. To, it's, nobody said it was supposed to be easy. And Neil's was v very much a resistance setup. At one point, we had talked about bringing Neil to Maryland to cut basic tracks with us. And then it just seemed like, you know, it just seemed like it was going to be really hard. And, and uh, you know, Neil's had a lot of great equipment, and I had access to stuff. And I was like, well, I know that Neil uses this one specific uh, Tweed Deluxe. And I've got one that I borrowed, and he could in the and uh, Larry Craig was like, "No, we'd have to bring ours." And I was like, "Well, it's a Tweed Deluxe." It's like, "Well, Neil's has been rebiased for six L six tubes, not six V six tubes. You know, we'd have to bring ours." And then the Whizzer. And I'm like, "What's the Whizzer?" And you know, people now. There's articles out there about the wizard, but somebody of his had made this thing. You know, the Fender Deluxe has three knobs on it. His buddy had made this thing that would go on top of the amp, and it had electric motors in it that he could activate with the foot switch to actually turn the knobs on the amp. So, you know, like when you see him with that crazy looking pedal board, this big red thing that has all these switches on it, they're all, all those things are going to pedals and different things, and they're going to the wizard. So when he wants the amp louder, he hits that, and this thing turns the knob on the amp which is kind of like the greatest, you know, like you, you've done it yourself. You've turned around in the middle of a song or, and that's really the best way. So he, his amp was on six and then he could nudge it up to 11 with his foot. So he did this fabulous uh, harmonica solo for us. He does a few passes of the harmonica solo, maybe eight. And then he comes back in, and he's like, uh, okay, it goes three to five to eight. And that was the comp. Like, he had the comp in his head. And, you know, it sounded great. But when I got it back to Maryland with uh, Nils, I put up the multi-track, and I, I really wanted to see if that was it. And it really was. That was the only way it would work. Like, he did the first three passes, and he's like, okay, I've got that phrase. Then he did the next four and five. He's like, now I've got that part. And then he was working on the end. So that was really kind of amazing that he had the comp in his head as he walked back into the control room. You know, Neil at the time was kind of recovering from a really bad bout of tinnitus, and he uh, he hadn't played electric guitar in a year and a half. Uh, they were working on uh, Harvest Moon, which was the first record that they did everything at the ranch, including the ma mastering. But he played electric for us. He would sit outside of the control room and listen a few times, you know, and he had his beautiful vintage roll top desk. And, you know, while he's listening, he's opening his mail and, you know, people had sent him some Lionel trains and he was to open a box and go, do you think this is good or very good? <laughs> you know, in like vintage eBay terms. So that was pretty interesting. So we're, 
we're playing this one song, running it down. Neil comes in and he goes, hey, what's going on? Why, why are you turning that guitar down? Nils is like, well, Neil, Eric played that on the basic track. And, you know, we're going back and forth. And it's supposed to be kind of a left brain, right brain conversation. And, but I'm going to replace that. So I don't want you to be hearing that. And Neil is standing there, you know, Nils and I are sitting at the console. Neil is standing there, and I don't know if you've, he's a pretty big guy. So he's standing right there, and we're looking up, and it's, it's feeling more and more like a Clint Eastwood movie. And he makes us wait. And we're like, and he's like, well, Nils, I think you'd be making a really big mistake. He goes, what Eric played there was sick and awful and great. And you really need to leave that there. And Nils was like, okay. <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> and I was sitting there, you know, I'm Neil Young super fan. And I'm like, sick, awful, and great. I got it. It's my tombstone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this really was a fantasy for me to be there, not just as a fan, you know, shaking hands, but I'm the producer, you know, I'm hitting the button every once in a while, you know, hey, Neil, could you do that again? You know, it's just like I, I always do. And uh, to cap it off, uh, you know, and Neil at the time, he had, he had started with 500 acres that he bought with the money from Harvest uh, to move there from Topanga Canyon. And then over the years, he kept just buying up the neighbors and his manager got a place right nearby. And so when you went to stay there and when he, he didn't take down all these old buildings, he just fixed them all up. So like Ben Keith, the steel player, we stayed at his house, you know, which was on the property. And uh, at one point, and Neil had been, you know, smoking weed, Throughout the day, he had like some really good weed that he had Ohio blue tip matches, boxes of them all over the place. And his pot was so good, it wouldn't, you know, it would just, he'd take a couple puffs and then it would, it would, wouldn't stay lit because it was really moist. But later on, when work was done, you know, I was able to have some with Neil. And, uh, you know, I'm from a small town outside of Chicago, Batavia, Illinois. And uh, at this one point, we went to, you know, pass the joint, you know. And here I am with, I'm with my hero. And all I can think of is like, you know, the painting on the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> like wow you know I and I was had only been married for about a year and I was like what if they asked me to stay I just have to call home and say I gotta stay they they asked me to stay you know it was just a, it was a crazy it it was one of the crazy things that happens when you make music you know you end up in a situation like that if you'd like to hear more Neil Young stories, click this playlist and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.